The Audio Beacon, March 2021. Risky Living. In lockdown, there has been plenty of time for reading. Earlier, last year, I reread Malcolm Muggeridge's Chronicles of Wasted Time, his autobiography in two volumes. Muggeridge was a journalist, author, member of MI6 in Africa during the war, and in Paris after its liberation. He became an active Christian, and his mentors from the past were Augustine of Hippo, Tolstoy, Mother Teresa, and Simon Weil, 1909-1943. He also regularly had lunch with George Orwell in London in 1945. I know the lives of the first three, but not Simon Weil's. She was a polymath, an author of several books, a mystic Christian, a sociologist and philosopher, and loosely a member of the French Resistance who came to England with some of the Free French in 1942. She died in her thirties in Kent from a mixture of tuberculosis, overwork and self-denial. In reading an anthology of her work, Simone Weil, an anthology, Penguin 2005, one sentence struck me, among many, given our present times. Risk is an essential need of the soul. The absence of risk produces a type of boredom which paralyses in a different way from fear. I don't think she would advocate flaunting her security, although her risk threshold was probably far higher than most of ours. I think she was prepared to face great risks, as many did in those days. But she puts her finger on an important point, which is that risk is an important context in which we learn many other things. Faith, hope, despite unappealing circumstances, courage, endurance, loyalty and humour. Risk, if you like, is the stage on which these other players can display their qualities, and, in that sense, it is surely good for the soul. But on the other hand, our risk-taking should not needlessly endanger others. It is because of this that we observe the precautions that our government presently imposes. Face masks in public places, distancing, not socialising until it is safer, and being vaccinated. All these things reduce risk. But there is a balance of risks to be found, so there will come a time, soon I hope, when we must trade normally, socialise carefully, visit the elderly, educate the young and travel. In other words, we will have to live with a modicum of risk. As we move towards Easter and the Church's observation of Lent, a time for reflection, renewal and repentance, it is worth considering one of Jesus' great sayings, for whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will find it. Matthew 16 25. He was, of course, prepared to live with great risk, the risk of rejection, suffering and his own death. But it could not have been more calculated. It was calculated in eternity to demonstrate his love, provide a way of forgiveness and overcome death by the reality of resurrection. There is one prayer or collect which we say at this time of year and with which Simone would surely have agreed which goes like this. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first suffered pain, and entered not into glory before he was crucified, mercifully grant that we, walking the way of the cross, might find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. His risk-taking was our gain. The way of the cross surely involves risk, but can also be a way of life and peace. Patrick Whitworth, retired clergyman, Elcott. Reflections, thoughts and poems, very welcome, so please send to us for inclusion. Anon. I am not the house Zuma, I am the house Zuma's son. I was busy keeping out of the way until all the zooming had been done. Anglican commemorations in March. 8th of March. Geoffrey Studdard Kennedy, one of the great names in 20th century Christianity. When he died, aged 48, in 1929, King George V sent a telegram of condolence to his family. Ex-serviceman sent a wreath with a packet of woodbines at the centre, 
one hundred unemployed men marched from the Labour Exchange to Worcester Cathedral to pay their respects. One thousand seven hundred people filed past his coffin in a single day as it lay in a Liverpool church. He volunteered as an army padre in 1915. In 1916, he was at the Somme among the troops on a day when 21,000 were killed and 35,000 injured. In his diary, he wrote about accompanying the men digging trenches into no man's land. He wrote, Fear came. There was a pain underneath my belt. Of course, I had to go. It was the parish. We crept out. We could not get out into the two-foot ditch that they had made. It was crowded with men. We went along the edge. I whispered some inane remark as I passed by, and was rewarded with a grin which even in darkness could not hide, and often, when I passed, with the muttered comment, "'Gor blimey, if it ain't a padre!' Vaguely, I felt that this journey was worth while. As well as being with the troops at the front line, he marched with them, dug tunnels and trenches, shared jokes, led singing and held services. He sought out the wounded and dying in no man's land, often dragging them back to the trenches for treatment and prayer. He spent time at makeshift hospitals and often went for 24 hours without sleep. There is a story about two men walking down a trench and they came across a post with a board on it saying the vicarage. One of them said to his mate, Look, the bloody vicarage! Sturdard Kennedy poked his head out and said, and here's the bloody vicar. That willingness to be in the thick of the action eventually earned him the military cross at Messines Ridge in 1917. He brushed it off as no big deal, whereas in fact he'd been out bringing in wounded troops under fire. When he came back from the war, he was a changed man. Before the war, he advocated that men should go and fight for what they believed in, for their loved ones. But after the war, Having seen the horrors that he did, he came back and wrote and talked about peace. He started to write poetry. The first volume sold 400,000 copies by 1922. His work displayed increasing anger. Despite being a chaplain to the king, he was no establishment figure, becoming a fierce critic of the hardships faced by returning soldiers. He toured the country, speaking on behalf of the Industrial Christian Fellowship, he was due to give a talk for them in Liverpool when he fell ill and died. This cleric, famed for his modesty and self-sacrifice, would probably have been pleased to know that the most public memorial to him in Worcester, Studdard Kennedy House, is dedicated to helping people with mental health problems. Church of England booklet, supporting good mental health by Professor Chris Cook and Ruth Rice. Reflections in the booklet seek to provide reassurance, hope and comfort in these challenging times.